Unit 1. Periodic Table and Electronic Configuration What is a periodic table? Why do we arrange elements? Why do we call this arrangement periodic? The reason behind the periodic arrangement of elements is quite fascinating. Let's know about it. All things in the world are made up of tiny particles called atoms. Then what is an element? Element is a substance made of only one kind of atom. These elements were created long long ago during the Big Bang and these are the things that create everything including us. As we can see in the picture, our human body consists of many kind of elements. So elements are very important. And you probably have heard of many of these elements like oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, calcium and so on. But maybe you know statin, terbium, protactinium, dysprosium. There are so many elements, so many names to remember. Let's go back to our class for a moment. In our class, there may be 30 to 40 students. Now all of them have got different names, right? So a lot of names for your teacher to remember. But how your names are arranged in your attendance register? Obviously, it will be in the alphabetical order. Similarly, elements in chemistry are arranged very neatly in an organized fashion in a very special and important table. The attempts to classify the known elements have started long time ago. The people without the knowledge of their past history, origin and culture is like a tree without roots. Understanding how the periodic table was constructed will help you to understand its purpose. Let's look through the history. In 1817, German physicist Johann Doberiner began to formulate one of the earliest atoms to classify the elements. In 1829, he found that he could form some of the elements into a group of three with the members of each group having similar properties. He termed these groups as Dobernier's triads. In triads, the atomic weight of the middle element was found to be generally the arithmetic mean of the atomic weight of the other two elements in the triad. But Daubonnier could only find some triads, hence the system was not useful. French geologist Alexandre Chengoutois noticed that elements when ordered by their atomic weights display similar properties at regular intervals. In 1862, he devised a three-dimensional chart named Telluric Helix with the elements Arranged in a spiral on a cylinder by order of increasing atomic weight, the chart could work so that elements with similar properties lined up vertically. The next attempt was made in 1864. British chemist John Newlands presented a classification of the 62 known elements. When they are arranged in the increasing order of atomic mass, he found that every eighth element had properties similar to that of first. He compared this to the octaves found in music and the classification is known as Newland's octaves. But Newland's table left no gaps for possible future elements and in some cases had two elements at the same position in the same octave. In 1869, Russian chemist Dmitry Mendeleev arranged 63 elements by increasing atomic mass in several columns known as Mendeleev's periodic table. He was passionate about chemistry and his deepest wish was to organize the chemistry subject in a better way. And this passionate wish led to the creation of the periodic table, one of the most iconic creation ever seen in science. His periodic table was so powerful that he even predicted the existence and properties of new chemical elements. And when these elements were discovered, his place and history of science was assured. He dreamt and later he wrote, In a dream, I saw a table where all the elements fell into place as required. Awakening, I immediately wrote it down on a piece of paper. In 
if all the elements are arranged in the order of their atomic weights a periodic repetition of properties is obtained this is expressed by the law of periodicity he showed how the elements could be organized predicted existence of eight new elements behavior of some elements not aligned to his prediction and he then proposed their atomic base incorrect medelev discovered germanium on paper he called this new element a casilicon to fill the void in his periodic table between silicon and tin similarly he discovered gallium for a ca aluminum and scandium a ca boron on paper and predicted their existence with properties before their actual discoveries finally medley was right it turned out that chemist had measured some atomic base incorrectly and then one scientific community started paying attention to his periodic table and his theory Eighteen sixty nine is accepted as the year of discovery of the periodic system by Dimitri Mendeley, the father of periodic table. Two thousand nineteen is the one fiftieth anniversary of the periodic table, and two thousand nineteen is declared as the International Year of the Periodic Table of Chemical Elements (IYPT) two thousand nineteen. Element one hundred one in today's periodic table is named Mendelevium in his honor. With the discovery of electron at the backdrop, after forty-four years, a correct explanation emerged on the regular patterns in Mendeleev's periodic table. In nineteen thirteen, Henry Moseley, an English physicist, discovered that every chemical element's identity is determined by its number of protons, that is, atomic number. So, what is a periodic table? It's a massive slab of human genius. It holds the concise information and is a dense catalog of all sorts of elements in this universe. Modern periodic table consists of 118 elements. Each element is represented by one square on periodic table with one or two letter chemical symbol. Above the chemical symbol is the atomic number of the element and below the symbol are the full name of element and its atomic mass but the elements in the modern periodic table are arranged in a very special order why why don't we just put the elements in a long list it turns out if you arrange elements by atomic number a pattern emerges there is a periodicity or a repeating of certain characteristics For example, every after an inert gas, there will be an element that reacts violently with water. This periodic repetition is known as periodic law, and this is the basis for organizing the elements in the periodic table into columns. The vertical column of elements is called a group or family because they are like brothers and sisters who have similar physical and chemical properties. some groups are called by special names or family names these elements from the group 1 of periodic table called alkali metals these are alkali earth metals boron family carbon family nitrogen family oxygen family halogens and noble gas there are several horizontal rows in the periodic table and these rows are called periods so the modern periodic table contains 18 groups and 7 periods and skews a lot of information into the small space english writer said that the periodic table took all the jumbled facts about the elements and fitted them into a pattern and it was like turning a jungle into a garden out of the 118 elements 92 are naturally occurring elements and many elements not found in nature have been synthesized why periodic table important the periodic table is the most powerful tool in chemistry for organizing chemical information without it 
chemistry will be a chaotic, confusing jumble of random observations. What makes the periodic table really valuable is its use as a predictive tool. You can predict a lot of chemical behavior of an element if you know where it is on the periodic table. From the periodic table, we just not only get a lot of technical information about the elements, you get some actual piece of history. Because each element has got a name and the name has some sort of significance to them. And you can get something about science history from looking at the names. For example, helium. When people were doing studies of the sun, they found some unusual spectral lines and they deduced that there was a new element up there. And so they named it helium after Helios, the great god of sun. Behind elements, there is a rich story of discovery. We have discovered all the elements up to 118 and filled the whole bottom row. The 118 element was discovered in 2002 and named after scientist Yuri Organshian. Are we done yet? Well, not exactly. Just because the table looks full doesn't mean that it's complete because no one's really sure how many elements can exist. All the new elements we have been making recently only exist for the tiniest fraction of second before they decay into smaller atoms. And maybe there's going to be some point where we just can't make them anymore because they are so unstable. So in the near future, we might be learning a whole lot about how big our periodic table can really get.